so once again we are coming to the last part of the topic the story of village palampur and let us first have that remaining uh, chapters discussion and once again we will do the recapitulation of the whole chapter along with our question answers non farm activities the farm activities we have understood very clearly that the agricultural activities which is the predominant livelihood option of the villagers of palampur or most of the villages in india here some non farm activities what is non farm activities the activities which are not directly related to agriculture so those who are not related to those who are not accustomed to uh, farming agricultural activities but maintain their own livelihood is called non farm activities there are different non farm activities dairy farming small scale manufacturing cattle uh, shop keeping transporting bee keeping piggery uh, poultry farming so many are there but in village palampur we see that dairy farming small scale manufacturing shop keeping transporting are available first the dairy farming we know that the rearing of cow or buffalo from the commercial point of view from com for commercial purpose is called the dairy farming in dairy farming we are not only collecting the milk but also we are processing the milk and we are preparing different milk products butter ghee curds chocolates and so many and so many so this processing in a scientific method is made and of course the collection of a uh, milk both this together is called dairy farming so it is also a kind of farming where directly agriculture is not being done this is dairy farming second is small scale manufacturing we see although the small scale manufacturing units in palampur was very little and uh, it is mostly a family um, uh, activities so we cannot consider it is a very big manufacturing activities done in uh, palampur but small scale activities at least it gives uh, livelihood option to a few third is shopkeeping here also in village palampur or in the uh, remote villages in india we often see that shops are there who are selling mostly the necessities the essential commodities and those commodities like our day to day uh, needs from grocery items to stationery items and most of the things are not that much costly not that much expensive so this kind of shopkeeping is there some eatables were there near by the bus stand so eatables means the small uh, uh, hotel like uh, places but it is not a very established hotel okay so this is shopkeeping and last but not the least transporting was there and here we see that the traditional transports like the bullock cart buggy this uh, rickshaw along with this um, modern uh, transport means like jeep tractors lorries uh, are also available these transporting uh, equipments are used for ferrying that means carrying the goods as well as the people so although the contribution of these uh, non farm activities is very less in the uh, economic activities economic contribution of village palampur but i previously said ki only a few who are mostly remaining uh, upon the 150 marginal families dalit families who are staying outskirt of the um, uh, village 
they were actually working into this. And in this way, we can see that the productivity in agriculture was uh, good uh, due to the availability of uh, irrigation facilities, but at the same time, this small non-farm activities had uh, is sh uh, showing us that the uh, village is maintaining the balance. Maintaining not the balance, but maintaining the uh, scope for non-farm activities too. And obviously, we can understand as much as we can shift the farming people into other non-farming activities, our livelihood options will be open, our livelihood options will be more and more. Here I am going to discuss one thing with uh, what we will discuss in the later chapter, that is disguised unemployment. The word you must uh, be acquainted with, disguised unemployment. Disguised unemployment. What is disguised unemployment? Let us suppose in the year 2018, there is a plot of land in which a father and his four sons had cultivated and they have produced five quintal of wheat. Five members have produced five quintal of wheat in a plot of land in 2018. In the next year, 2019, they have produced the same crop wheat on the same plot of land, but this year only three members are working. One son had gone to uh, the nearby uh, village areas for pulling rickshaw and another son has gone to the town uh, where he is working as a porter. So these two are not involved in the agricultural activity this year. And as a result, what do you see? That the production remains not less but remains the same, five quintal. Now the question automatically arises: ki how with three members they are getting, they are producing the same level of output, same level of yield, five quintal of wheat. Actually, those two members were disguisedly employed. They were apparently seemed to be employed but they had not increased the productivity in the previous year. In economics, we always consider the productivity, not the total production. Per unit production in a particular acre of land, that is called productivity. Per unit production. So the per unit production was not increased because of the involvement of that two members. And this is called disguised unemployment. So, it is a common phenomena in our rural economy that almost everyone is dependent upon agriculture because they are not having any other livelihood option. They are forced, they are compelled to continue with this production process, whatever may be the productive activity. What, whatever may be the return. So, if we switch over a huge sum from agricultural activity to other non-farm activities, poultry farming, piggery, beekeeping, fishery, this uh, shop, hotels, transportation, in all these activities, then, then we see that the economic burden of the rural economy will be switched over from one end to another and agricultural productivity will also be increased because we can get the opportunity of using uh, more land, 
we can use the better technology we can use the state of the art uh, equipments and with this productivity will automatically be increased we will get marketable surplus and because of that sur surplus the farmers economic condition will be improved as a result village economy will be improved their purchasing power will be increased therefore they will demand the latest technological commodities in for their life so this way we see that the economic structure the economic horizon of the village will be completely changed and this must be the uh, aim of tomorrow's okay so with this we can come to an end of the topic discussion a small recapitulation so we are having three salient features in this chapter factors of production there are four factors of production land labor physical capital and human capital land is that surface where economic activity is taken place it comprises of the plain surface under surface and the water surface labor the power of laborer which is used in the production process is called labor it is of two types physical labor or manual labor where more and more physical labor is used like the work of rickshaw puller construction worker whereas mental labor where we are using more of our intellectual power our mental power just like the work of a doctor an astronaut a teacher okay then physical capital that part of capital which is having two parts which is fixed capital and working capital fixed capital the part of capital which is uh, uh, used for a long period of time over a period of time okay this is called fixed capital like the building machinery equipments etc now the working capital working capital is that part of capital which is used up during the process of production which is used up during the process of production so this is uh, raw materials money etc and last but not the least the human capital or entrepreneur it is also called enterprise this that skill technology and training which makes a human being a specialized one a skilled one that is called human capital and human capital coordinates the three other three factors of production so these are all factors of production and without factors of production we cannot produce anything now the green revolution we have discussed in detail about the green revolution okay so that notes and its limitation its uh, merits and its demerits both are equally important last but not the least the non farm activities that means those activities which are not directly related to agriculture this is called non farm activities in non farm activities in village palampur we see dairy farming small scale manufacturing shopkeeping and transporting along with this we can have varied level of uh, non farm activities uh, fishing this beekeeping pigari poultry farming this kind of uh, things are all coming under the non farm activities now this the this is the end of the ch chapter now we have to pay attention on the all the ncert questions but specifically question number 3 question number 4 8 10 13 and 14 on question number 3 we can see that how did the spread of electricity help farmers in palampur so it is seen that in palampur there was the persian wheels but when electricity has come as a result the their production has grown uh, has grown very fast and rapid way so this is the help of the electricity electrical uh, electric uh, help of electricity next question number 4 is it important to increase the area under irrigation why 
Undoubtedly, the answer will be yes, because if we are having more and more irrigational facilities, we can get more and more production. The farmers will not be uncertain about their productivity, about their production, and they, they don't have to depend upon the vagaries of monsoon. So, more and more area must be needed to come under the irrigation. Question number 8. What are the different ways of increasing production on the same piece of land? Uh, we know that here uh, the multiple cropping system, what is um, told, that has to be, um, that will be the answer. Next question number 10. How do the medium and large farmers obtain capital for farming? How is it different from small farmers? The medium and small, um, sorry, medium and large farmers often get funds from the banks because they are producing huge. As a result, they are having massive amount of marketable surplus. Those marketable surplus, they are selling in the market and they are getting huge amount of profit out of that. They are keeping that money in the bank as saving. And in the next year, they are taking out uh, money as a loan from the banks and in this way they are just reinvesting their capital for the production process whereas the marginal farmers the landless farmers are often working under the medium and large farmers field therefore they never become uh, independent they never become self-sufficient uh, 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 during the agricultural activity and most of the time they are being indebted to the rich and uh, medium farmers. Question number 13, question number 13, what are the non-farm production activities taking place in your region? Make a short list. So it is elaborately discussed. It, you apply your common sense which can be most important, which can be more uh, relevant. You must list this. And what can be done so that more non-farm production activities can be started in villages? What can be done? It's a kind of case study question. Nowadays, the question pattern is changed. It is not flat and straightforward questions coming up. So always the examiners are asking the questions to know how do you are understanding the fact? How do you relate the learning into your uh, practical field. So this answer that production activities can be started. First and foremost thing the farmers or the villagers should get, should have better access to banks because if they will get formal loans then they don't have to uh, get panic for uh, how they will arrange the capital, the fund. Number two, they must have easy access to bank. They should not have the problem of collateral. I told earlier that collateral is nothing but the guarantee to be kept in the bank, in exchange of which you can get the loans. Now, this is a big problem for the marginal farmers, landless farmers, and hence, government has to provide the system of collateral more and more easy so that the marginal farmers can get the loans. Secondly, the uh, seeds, fertilizers should be sold at a lower price or reasonably cheap price so that farmers can get hold of that and the agricultural equipment should also be provided at a lower cost. These are the ways non-farm uh, non production activities can be uh, provided. Suppose they can get loan for poultry farming, they can go and get loan from dairy farming, they can get uh, training for small scale manufacturing units. Nowadays in the villages also we see uh, a large number of educated youngsters are coming. So if they will get a small amount of uh, training and banking help, they could start their own um, uh, livelihood options, okay, they can become self-dependent. So that has to be done by the government. With this, I am ending the class. Afterwards, if any uh, queries are there, you can send it on the message box. Thank you.